village, trust, village trustee. Uh, we have three candidates to my right. Is, to my far right is uh, Trustee May Brandon. To my immediate right is Trustee Georgia O'Neill. To my left is Trustee Gary, Gary Kopachinski. Uh, we will give each candidate an opportunity to present an opening statement, and then we will present, uh, have you, give you the opportunity to present questions. Now, I've been informed that if you do not have your questions written down on one of the cards or any other piece of paper, the questions will not be allowed. Uh, we'll start first with um, a two-minute opening statement by each candidate, and we'll start with uh, Trustee May Graham. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, once again, I'd like to thank the Park Forest, and Park Forest Nonpartisan Committee, as well as the Friends of the Library, for um, providing this opportunity for you to get to meet us and for us to be here to answer your question. And thank you for coming out. This is a great turnout on such a, it is a beautiful afternoon. It may be cold, but you have to agree the sun is beautiful, so uh, uh, thank you once again. Um, it's like, it was turning, what do I say now? I've been a trustee here since uh, 2003, but I've been living in the village since 1966. Uh, and I became immediately involved in activities here in the village. I began by being involved with my church, and then when my oldest son went to school, then naturally, since all I had to do was walk across the parking court to school, I became involved with the school. Um, one, of, one of the things that is, I've really been most impressed with this village is that this village has had a tradition of service and volunteerism. And it's been that aspect of the village that I have loved, absolutely loved, because it has provided not only my children, but it has provided me with an opportunity to grow and develop. Uh, I, my choice of occupations, which I am an occupational therapist, came by the way of me being involved in activities here in the village and in the schools. Mm -hmm. So it, it has helped to expand my horizon. It has helped to brought me, uh, which I think is one of the reasons that it, it, provides me with the opportunity to serve you. Um, and I've been very honored to have that opportunity. I cherish Park Forest. And I cherish uh, being continuing to serve as your trustee so that Park Forest can continue to be the type of community that we want our future generations to grow up and to cherish also. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I was also told to remind you that the room is very well designed, so that if you have conversations, they will carry. So please, uh, no talking. We'll move then to Trustee O'Neill. Uh, yes, and I want to start off by also thanking the Park Forest Nonpartisan Committee and the Friends of the Park Forest Library for hosting this today. And it is giving us the opportunity to, um, to meet with all of you and to discuss issues that are relevant uh, to you. Um, thanks, so thank you for being here. Um, I do have to make a, a confession. I did have an opening statement, and I came from Indiana because I'm helping Tony Cook today. So I left my opening statement. I'm just going to read a couple of points off of um, the sheet that you already have, and then close with, um, I feel, the most pertinent uh, statement to make. And I have been here for 41 years. Um, we have, uh, my late husband Marty and I raised three children. They went to um, all the, uh, of course, we were very active with them in the schools uh, surrounding, in Park Forest and surrounding Park Forest. And starting um, in 1983, I believe, I was asked and uh, invited, I should say, to become um, on the staff of the Park Forest Chamber of Commerce. And um, that started a span of a career of 22 years with three Chambers of Commerce. And that has been so instrumental in my life. And my family supported that. Uh, they all served as volunteers in one capacity or another. 
As a matter of fact, I have a daughter in Nashville. She's very active with the Nashville Chamber of Commerce, and she was just nominated for Nashville Businesswoman of the Year. And she states that her she would sit with me when she was 10 years old, and I was with the Park Forest Chamber, and she would sit and read a book, and she said it just cemented in her the importance <coughs> of becoming involved uh, with the business community. Um, so just the last statement, the mo if I were to write down three things that have really been attractive to me about Park Bars, it's the spirit, the diversity, and all the amenities. So thank you, and I do hope you vote on April 5th. Thank you. Trustee Colchinson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I want to thank the nonpartisan <laughs> committee. It's an honor to sit here with you, Your Honor. Um, I want to thank the nonpartisan committee, the Friends of the Library. Um, I'm Gary Kopachinsky. I'm running for re-election as village trustee. I'm um, going to start with a little story. 26 years ago yesterday, I discovered, I was sitting in a classroom at the University of Notre Dame, and uh, Bill Story was teaching and um, giving what would end up being his last uh, uh, church evolution course, teaching his last church evolution course. And on that day, I just got off the phone with Bill and thanked him again. Um, he taught us about uh, Francis Xavier, who Bill said at the time uh, went through China, baptized 600,000 people in 10 years, but his mission was a total failure. Why? Because he found himself so superior, he just poured water on the Chinese and he moved on. Contrast that with Matteo Ricci and Roberto De Nobili, both also Jesuits, who went to India and China, and the first thing they did was learn India, and they learned China. Uh, Ricci went to China, he learned the language, he studied in China, he studied China herself, Bill told us. And they were much more successful. That was a life lesson for me 26 years ago, and when I arrived in Park Forest in 2000, um, I started studying Park Forest, and I got involved with Park Forest. I learned, uh, I joined the commission, um, and I have been enjoying uh, studying and writing about Park Forest ever since, and it's an honor to serve as your trustee, and I look forward to continued service uh, to the people of this village. Thank you. Thank you. I have questions, ladies and gentlemen. First question. And this is to all of the candidates. You moved here for <laughs> looks like um, you moved here for divers plus four. Please help me out. What is the diversity? Oh, diversity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, let me start again. You moved here for diversity. What is the diversity of Park Forest Department heads? Okay. What is the diversity of Park, uh, Park Forest Department heads? Pardon me, I apologize. So we'll, this is a, tr a candidate, a question rather, for all of the candidates. We'll start with um, uh, Trustee. Uh, I gather you're asking for the uh, numbers. Uh, we do have a very diverse uh, staff uh, at Village Hall. Um, we have uh, uh, if you're looking for numbers, I'm sorry, I, would, I can't give you those numbers. But um, one of the things that our village manager and the department heads have been very, uh, <coughs> very uh, studious about is, is obtaining a very a staff that represents this community. So uh, when we're talking about diversity, we're talking about race, we're talking about color, we're talking about religion. And um, I think if you were to explore the staff that works for the village today, we'll find that type of diversity throughout our staff. Uh, I, I guess that's what you're talking about. 
Thank you. Uh, Trustee O'Neill? Well, I'm proud to say that uh, it's an ongoing effort. And in fact, we just had two uh, new young police uh, uh, brought on board, and one was a woman and one was a veteran. And uh, it, is, it is something that I have observed over the four and a half years that I've been a trustee. Uh, and again, as I say, it's an ongoing effort. Um, we have, and, and the win-win of it, it's not just, because I think if it were just a diverse staff, um, that wouldn't be um, as successful as a professional staff. It is both diverse and professional. I've said this before, you've heard me say it before, uh, like before, I am so proud of the level of professionalism of our staff. Um, and the fact that it's diverse makes it all the better. Thank you. Trustee Kovacic? Well, we have, um, going through in my mind here, um, the head of our health department is African American. Um, our three chiefs right now in the police department are Caucasian men. We did have a, an African American deputy chief who was hired away as, uh, uh, and became police chief in another municipality. Um, we do have uh, women who are department heads. Um, the manager is Caucasian uh, right now. We had an African-American assistant manager uh, who was hired away by another municipality and um, uh, uh, took a position in Phoenix and then locally. And I, Napoleon was one of the most creative people I've ever met in my life. And um, I hope he's doing well now. Um, so our, our commitment, um, this is one of the few departments, well, I haven't seen them all, but I know that whenever our police uh, uh, recruit, they uh, do put on the literature that they are looking, uh, that uh, African Americans are especially encouraged to, um, uh, to apply. Um, so that is a message uh, diversity is a commitment that runs deep in our staff, and uh, I am very uh, glad for that, and um, uh, we will continue to hire uh, the best people, poss uh, the best people uh, possible to uh, serve the citizens of Park Forest. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, each candidate will be given an opportunity for a one-minute rebuttal. Is there any rebuttal? Uh No, not very vulnerable, just an addition. You know, it is important for, uh, I think it's important for our staff to be diverse in terms of, of color, race, and all those things. But we, by far, we want staff that is qualified, that is professional. We want staff who will do a good job for you, our citizens, regardless of their their race, color, religion, or anything else. I think that is number one. And yes, part of that is making sure that that staff is also diverse. So I just wanted to let, you know, to put that forth because we're not talking about putting diversity on top and then looking at the qualifications. It's looking at the qualifications. And I'm, if I were hiring someone, I would be looking for the qualifications. Diversity is, an, is, is part of that. Because after all, we are equal opportunity employers. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other rebuttal? I have a question for all the candidates. How will you improve open public participation in the policy issues important to our community, such as no restaurant, high taxes, Canadian National Railway? We'll start first with Trustee O'Neill. Yes. We have. Our meetings are open to the public, and we that's advertised, or I should say stated on our website, in literature. Um, we have volunteer commissions that uh, people can, in which people can participate. Um, and while we're not uh, discussing policy at neighborhood meetings, it certainly is a wonderful opportunity for people to put issues forward. And then if they want to go on to the next step, and as I said, come to a meeting, uh, be part of a commission. Um, 
I, I think it's a nice all-around opportunity for, for park foresters to become involved in the process. Thank you. Trustee Nicholson. Thank you. Um, I'm going to tell you, we are really an open working government. Um, and I welcome opportunities to continue to uh, branch out and uh, become even more open. But as I, we've talked about this for years, and I've had conversations with many of you over the years, as I look, um, as I talk to people who are on, serve on boards in other communities, um, we don't have uh, the mayor getting up and pulling the plug uh, on the television camera, uh, which uh, happened in a local municipality not too long ago. Um, we don't have, uh, I mean, we have so many opportunities for the citizens to get involved. Uh, this Saturday, we are going to have our monthly Saturday rules meeting, and nine times out of 10, we're sitting there alone talking philosophy for an hour, um, or uh, staff makes a presentation. And you should know that you are welcome, and if you show up, you are first on the agenda. Everything else uh, is set aside. We have neighborhood meetings. Um, I know we have a lot of challenges. Uh, as I drive up Forest in my car and on my bike, um, I would love to have half a million more dollars to be able to do some serious uh, road repair. Uh, but we're not going to do that to you. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to notch up our, uh, our tax levy five more percentage points uh, so that we can cover some roads. We're looking for other ways to pay for that. Um, so, uh, again, I'm accessible, I know my colleagues are uh, on, on the board, and uh, we're always here to listen. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Brandon? We are by far one of the most open communities in terms of our government. Um, it's interesting because as laws have been passed in regarding to uh, allowing citizens to speak at meetings, uh, having everything open and transparent. Is that something that has been going on in the Village of Park Forest for a very long time? Um, I think all three of us participated in a program called LEAD, which was uh, for uh, government uh, participants. And as you looked at other people that were involved in my class, for instance, the kinds of things that were stressed to have good government were the kinds of things that this village was already doing and continues to do. Um, if you're talking about budget, whether you're talking about Canadian National, whether you're talking about any type of issue, you're always welcome to come to a board meeting and discuss those issues. The agenda is always is public. Uh, you can go online and find anything from the budget to pass uh, agenda items to pass minutes. It's all there. Even when we're discussing the budget, and that's the thing that we hear so much about, you know, uh, the tax, the levy, and all of that. When we're talking about that, and we're, it's open for you to give us feedback, if we have two people that show up, that's big. That's big. So there, the opportunity is there. I think it's up to you, the citizens, to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, I don't know what else we can do as a village government to uh, open it up anymore. So it's really the onus now is you as citizens to come and be, be, be a part of that. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had a cellular phone to go off, so if you do have your cellular phone with you, I'm going to ask if you would not mind putting the same vibration. Uh, each candidate will be after allowed uh, one minute rebuttal. Is there any rebuttal? I have another question for all of the candidates. Do you feel, what do you feel can be done to help lower property taxes? We'll start first with uh, Trustee Kopsinski. I was, uh, I just finished yesterday uh, reading the report from Northern Illinois University. Um, the, uh, uh, they came out here, they did a study, and they do have, uh, some good suggestions coming from the outside in. 
Uh, certainly, we need to increase our uh, sales tax base. Um, we do have one store uh, that will be opening in the downtown. Um, the food co-op is moving in. That will generate sales tax. Um, we do have two art galleries uh, in the downtown, tall grass and salon artists. Um, that generates sales tax. But uh, we certainly, certainly need to uh, uh, continue to uh, woo those types of businesses uh, to the downtown. And you, you, it's not that Park Forest changed. Everything else changed. Um, all of those companies that used to be located in the center, in the downtown, their traffic requirements now are completely different than they were 40, 50 years ago, whenever they uh, first settled in Park Forest. Um, we do have traffic on Western, but convincing, you know, convincing business entities to come away from Route 30, uh, that, that's, that's tough. And I know that uh, our staff is working on that. We are working on redeveloping a portion of uh, uh, Route 30 with our transit-oriented development. Um, when that happens, uh, we will see some retail there, I'm sure. Uh, but the, the town was built with the hub of the economic activity in the center, uh, C-E-N-T-R-E. <coughs> and um, uh, it was not built on uh, the most trafficked roads. So um, that is something we continue to, um, uh, to work on. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Brandon? Um, yes, that's right. The town was developed um, with the hub being in the center. But if you look at what has happened, where the trends are now, they are on accessible highways. You know, that's where everything is looking for. Uh, well, um, Lincoln Highway was a big thing. Now, you know, if you look at Orland, they're looking to, you know, where can a person get off and immediately find the stores? And they are looking for accounts. So they're looking for certain incomes, accessible uh, uh, incomes that's available in town. So all those kinds of things are issues that companies look at when they're talking about coming to your particular town or village. We continue to struggle, we continue to, to go out and look for and you know, negotiate with other companies, other businesses. It doesn't have to be big business. Small businesses really are, are the, the foundation of this country. Um, but the thing of it is, is that when we do get businesses coming in, um, we need, those businesses need our support. Um, people talk about, you know, the grocery store issue. Um, grocery stores, any kind of stores cannot survive if they don't get the support of the community. And that's very crucial. So we all have a responsibility in this. Um, whatever type of business that we're able to draw to this community, you, our citizens, have to be a part of that because without you servicing and coming to these businesses first, not going to Orland, not going to Oakville, but shopping at home first, that's when we will be able to see our sales base increase and we will have our tax And the other part of the tax, please don't forget that we're not responsible for the whole entire property tax bill. You know, if it's a dollar, 30 cents of your dollar, is the village's portion. So remember that. Thank you. Trustee And I just want to finish the comment uh, that Trustee Brandon made that was very accurate. But 30%, but um, almost 60% goes to the schools. Um, and we can sometimes talk about education reform. But right now, I do agree that sales tax revenue is, um, is definitely what's needed. And uh, Gary mentioned uh, two things. One, the uh, transit-oriented development. And that is going to bring in some uh, businesses uh, that will generate sales tax revenue. And there are four priorities in our strategic plan, um, but the transit-oriented development is the first priority, and we're um, looking at that uh, um, as again as a priority. Another thing um, that Gary mentioned was 
reading a report, a report, the author of the report, when they um, came to us and gave us a synopsis, we had discussion on the tax, and one of the things that I liked, I really did like the idea of, because there are other communities out there that are suffering as well, and they don't have a strong commercial base. And we talked about getting together a council of communities to perhaps meet with the new president of Cook County um, in order to alleviate the tax burden. And then I also want to pick up on what May said, um, because someone just asked me right before this started about a statement I made uh, last where in early 2010, occupancy downtown was at 80%, but it's mostly service. And, and also what May said about that doesn't, even when we do get in the businesses that generate sales tax revenue, it's gonna take you to uh, do business with them. Thank you. Is there any other vote? Trustee Coach. Thank you, Judge. The, um, I know the people in this room shop Park Forest first. Um, I know, I, I know your commitment is uh, to the village, and I know you understand. Uh, we also need to keep the music uh, playing, keep the drums rolling for uh, school funding reform. Um, if you make $50,000 a year, and this guy over here makes $100,000 a year, the assessor's office looks at your properties and says, I want $6,000 from both of you. And it doesn't make any sense. Um, it's not based on uh, ability to pay, it's based on some assessed value of properties, and it's hurting a lot of us. Um, so that's another thing that has to change. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any vote? I have another question for all of the candidates. What has been your greatest accomplishment as a trustee? We'll start out with Trustee O'Neill. And I don't look at it as an accomplishment. I look at it as a channel that has been provided to me. Um, I mentioned before about my business background, being with Chambers of Commerce, managing Chambers of Commerce for 22 years. It was just such a natural transition for me to become involved with our economic development advisory group. And I do feel that I have contributed to that group. Um, one of the, um, actually one of the uh, programs that they have started, the Business Person of the Year Award, actually came through uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it was initiated by the Chamber of Commerce I was with. Um, and I do, I mentioned one time before, when I leave there, when I go to those meetings and I leave there, um, I really feel good. I feel good that um, I am able to contribute. I feel good that I understand what's going on and that um, I'm part of a process that uh, is um, coming up, are coming up with ways to retain our businesses. That is so important. We talked before about business attraction, but retaining our current businesses. Um, we have 300 and some businesses in Park Forest, so we have to make sure that we do all the things we can to keep them happy, keep them functional, and keep them here. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Kulczynski. <coughs> Thank you for the softball question. Um, I, you, you know, I, I don't know. Um, in 2003, I sat here running for office the first time, uh, tremulously. Uh, this is a more intimate uh, room. And I started a dialogue. You know, I started listening. And I believe that one of my accomplishments is that I study. I have studied Park Forest. I have read budgets for years now. I have talked to our staff, I have talked to our citizens, I have talked to 
business owners, uh, people in the community, people uh, in, in surrounding communities, and I have made a commitment to be a student at Park Forest. Um, and that's what I try and do better every day. Thank you. Trustee um, Brennan. I don't know that it's an accomplishment, but I think that what I am, what I consider myself to be, is a champion for Park Forest. Wherever it is that I go, whether I am walking through the neighborhoods, driving my car down the street, <laughs> in another town or village, going to a conference, going to some other me regional type of meeting, I am always looking out for things that I think <coughs> will benefit our village. I mean, that's, that's kind of where, the way my head works. Um, I, you know, a couple of those things, I once, my husband gets a little bothered that I um, am nosy sometimes. <laughs> it's it was this, don't stop the car, don't do that, don't, you know. Um, but the uh, Commonwealth Edison person was working one day when I was driving down the street and the power had gone out, and I stopped and asked him about it. And as a result of that conversation with him, it started a relationship with this village in Commonwealth Edison that has led to a mass improvement of our service here in the village. I mean, that's one of the things. Um, <coughs> when I was at a conference, I, I saw a, a presentation that was put on by Schomburg, and it was about um, crime-free housing ordinance. And I, I, it really struck me because it was focusing on rental properties, and I thought, oh my gosh, Schomburg? So I took a closer look at it and I thought, well, you know, this is something that perhaps we can use here in our village to address some of the issues that we were facing in terms of rental property. And that's an ordinance that has been, and, and could, that is part of our ordinance, is our property house, which helps us to address some of the issues that we have in regards to absentee landlords and rental properties. So, um, you know, I'm a champion for Park Forest and always will be. Thank you. Is there any rebuttal? I have a question for all of the trustee candidates. Please explain the program for replacing water pipes. How long will we be dealing with rusty water intermittently? <laughs> we'll start first with Trustee Copesensky. Well, the process is that we, we replace them as quickly as we can. Um, we have over 70 miles of water mains. Um, in Park Forest, and uh, we had a limited budget. Um, and what we did a few years ago, uh, the mayor's uh, suggestion that we essentially start a savings account or a separate fund uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, get out ahead of some of this. Um, I know that they had talked about it years ago doing similar, uh, establishing similar funds to get up, get ahead of water main replacement. Um, when are we gonna be finished with it? Well, that's, you know, that, that's never. Uh, we're gonna get through it once and then we're gonna have to start all over again. Um, and that's just uh, the nature of, uh, of decay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, before I lived in Park Forest, I lived in Stager. And over the summer, you, you knew that you did not do your laundry on Tuesdays or Thursdays, because that's when they flushed. Um, and um, we, in, in, in this village, we're just doing the best we can with limited resources. Uh, so I don't know a time frame for that. Um, I would love to see it all done uh, now and accomplished, um, but, um, we will continue to seek grants. We will continue to seek outside funding and uh, <coughs> work as quickly as possible to, um, um, to, to, to lay all new lines. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Brandon. Yeah, that's, that is what happens when most of the water lines were all put together, put in the ground at the same time. So uh, it's, it's an ongoing process and it will continue. Um, and as Trustee Kovacevsky said, probably when we get one set done uh, and move to the next, we'll have to go back. It's much like being at home, you know, when you get things repaired at home and 
kind of go through that cycle. Um, one of the things we do have a fund that is dedicated to um, to our, our maintenance of our water and water system. Um, but we also several years ago um, had our engineers to uh, develop a plan, um, kind of looking at where what was the most needed, um, and then we're following that plan. And we're following that plan the best that we can in terms of, of funding, and as well as the fact that sometimes, you know, the best laid plans um, go a little astray. For instance, if you have a water pipe that breaks, that it's not on the plan for this year's to be fixed, well, you can't put it aside, you can't fix it. So uh, uh, it's, we will continue to work on it. And uh, you, we just ask your, your, your tolerance uh, for the sediments that are in the water. Remember, the water is, is not contaminated. The water is, is we have good water. Um, it is tested uh, stringently uh, every month, even more than that it needs to be. But what you see are the sediments from working on the pipes. So that is not as safe we have bad water. Thank you. Trustee O'Neill. The reason I smiled when I heard this question is there was an expression that popped into my head, and I don't know if you ever heard of it, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And this is not a young community. This, we, you know, our pipes uh, you know, have been around for a long time. Um, and I have been impressed with the efforts that I've seen, and we have assistance uh, with some of the funding. Um, but we have, um, Listen, I lived in a, I just want to say adjacent community, that's all I'll say, um, before we moved here in 1970. And water was not a high priority with them. Um, I, I have seen and witnessed, and again, I've lived here for over 40 years, um, that water is a high priority with us. Um, even to the point where we want awards with it. But I have seen a great deal of effort in, um, attacking those pipes. So it'll be one bite at a time. Is there any rebuttal? I have another question for all the candidates. Your candidates for office, you know your community. Would you vote for someone who did not know the village <laughs> of Park Forest? Why? We'll start out first with Trustee Brennan. Would you read the question? Sure. Your candidates for office know your community. Would you vote for someone who did not know the village of Park Forest? Why? I guess I, I would equate that to um, hiring someone for a job uh, because this position as a trustee is a job, and you, as the residents and the citizens, are hiring. A person, in this case, um, the three of us, to serve as your trustee. So, um, when I think about hiring someone, I'm looking at their qualifications. I'm looking at their knowledge in regards to being able to serve that, um, to do that job, uh, to serve in that position, um, their background information. You know, so if you don't have uh, the knowledge base you don't have the qualifications and you don't have some of that experience. Those are the things that I'm looking at because I think that's what you need when you ask anyone to do a particular job. So um, if, you, if, you know, if I'm hiring you to be my plumber, I'm going to want to know that you are capable of being a plumber. <laughs> uh, not that you are uh, the electrician who may be on the side doing plumbing, you know. So that's the way I see this. This is, as far as I'm concerned, it is, it is a job for me. It's an occupation. It just happens to be an occupation that's more of a volunteer nature than it is <coughs> of, uh, being paid for. By pay comes in a different way than my, my professional job that I do uh, 40 hours a week or more. But yeah, that's that's the way I look at it. And that's the way that I look at um, selecting people for any objects that I use. Thank you. Trustee O'Neill? Uh, 
for my, it's tempting to just say ditto, but um, mm -hmm. I, I do think, I think you do have to look at qualifications. I think they are very, very important. But I agree that in a case like this, where we're representing a village that, um, that we consider a, a job, I think it's very, very important that we know our village and we know the issues and the strengths and the challenges, I think, uh, and that we have a history. Um, that's just, um, it, it seems almost, almost obvious. I do believe in qualifications. I, I would equate it to hiring someone, and I do believe that qualifications are very important. But again, in this case, I think it's, if not equal, if not equally, then more important than that person you know our cars. Thank you. Trustee Kulitsensky? Uh, the short answer is uh, no. I do not vote for people who I do not feel are qualified for the office they're seeking. And when people like that uh, are elected, it's usually disaster. It's usually disaster. Um, you need to know the process. You need to understand how government works. And it ain't always clean. It ain't always simple. Um, and uh, it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of tenacity. Um, you've got to stay with it. Um, we could talk about members of Congress who we like or who we dislike, uh, former presidents of the United States who we like or perhaps dislike, that here on the local level, you have every opportunity to get to know the town you're living in. You have every opportunity to be involved. There are so many levels of involvement in Park Forest. Um, it's, it, it, it's not even funny. I mean, the clubs, the organizations, the, uh, the, the, the commissions, so before seeking office, I, I, I mean, I look at myself in four years and think I may be considering a different seat, seeking a different seat. Um, I feel I'm ready now to do this job. You know, I feel I'm ready now to do this job, to serve as your trustee. Um, and uh, I didn't do that right away when I moved here. Um, so uh, I got involved on a commission on human relations, um, and then I started walking door to door, listening to park foresters, and um, I did a lot of it in that campaign. Um, so uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any rebuttal? I have another question for all of the candidates. <coughs> How do you suggest we attract younger park foresters to be enthusiastic about and active in the village's challenges and celebrations? We'll start first with Trustee O'Neill. That's, that's easy because it's being done right now. We have um, a staff person um, with community relations, um, Evelyn Sterling, who has uh, I don't know that she herself started it, but they started a group of ambassadors. And I have never seen a group grow faster than that group. And if you come now to a lot of our events, you're going to see a lot of young volunteers at those events. And I, I just have a feeling that that's going to grow. There may be other things we can do, um, but I, I think that this is one of the best things that I have seen done to attract uh, young volunteers. And they, they truly do seem, I was in attendance at several of these events where they were helping out, the one at the theater. Um, and I was just so impressed. They were manning booze, they were going around meeting, greeting. It's just, it was so refreshing to see that. Um, so we may continue to explore other ways, um, but I just think that's one of the best, and it's being done very well. Thank you. Trustee Kopsinski. Um, it is being done well, but it is still a challenge. Uh, I've given this a lot of thought. I mean, it, it, it almost seems like 
getting involved has skipped a generation. And I'm trying to piece together in my mind, you know, what are the, what are the dynamics? I mean, I know, obviously, you, you have two, uh, two people working. Sometimes two people working more than one job uh, in this economy. Um, and that's a stress. Um, but the other thing, and I'm going to tell you, my thinking on the military <coughs> has gone completely 180 degrees um, around. I read uh, a few books by Frank Schaefer, and uh, the last one is called AWOL, The Absence of the Rich from Military Service and How It's Harming Our Country. Uh, he wrote it with a woman, and neither he nor, this, uh, nor, nor the woman who co-authored with him has military experience. But they talk about what they've learned, what Frank has learned from his son, who entered the military, and what she learned from her husband. And there's an ethos, there's, a, the, 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 there's an ethic there of involvement, of dedication, of service, of uh, community. And when I go back and I look at my dad and my mom, who served uh, Baldwin Baseball, uh, and organizations like that, Parish Council at the Parish, uh, and, and all the men and women they knew, I mean, predominantly, you know, the, the guys, they, they served our country. And they came out with a different ethic, that community is important, that all of us, uh, all of us need to invest ourselves. Um, so, you know, there's that for what it's worth. Um, and I like our ambassadors. I think if you're looking for future board members, uh, ladies and gentlemen, get to know some of these people. They are really, really dedicated and part force first. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Brandon? Yeah, I, I wonder about that generation too. <laughs> Trustee Bill Jensen. Um, because I'm involved in a number of organizations and groups, and I can tell you the single most difficult thing, um, if I look across any of the groups that I belong to, they all point you and I in terms of age. And I and any of you that are younger, I and generally speaking, okay. <laughs> um, and and it's it's a, a constant ongoing battle. How do we get that younger generation involved in, in any of our community organizations, service organizations, and in our village? Um, the ambassadors um, happen to be a great example of a beginning of that. Um, and they are great, they are enthusiastic, but we need to continue to explore other ways of bringing in other groups. Because the ambassadors um, are, are, you know, they're a certain type of people and, you know, with certain type of personalities. So then you have other groups who are, that's not going to attract. So we've got to come up and figure out um, how do we attract some of the others. Um, a great example that's been going on that I think people are not aware of is the PAC organization. Those teens, those kids that have become involved in PAC um, when they were younger are now serving as um, leaders, as, as <coughs> supervisors. And they've gone through that, so that's another area. So we have to just kind of keep looking at various avenues and various doors that we can, um, that the kids are coming through and continue to pull them through as they get older and into adulthood and not let them fall through the cracks. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that I think we all need to do as a community because, you know, we, you know, I, I, I love doing this, but I think there's a point in time that, I'll, I, that I want to just kind of sit back and put my feet up too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we need those younger, that younger group to come in and take over some of us. Thank you. Is there any rebuttal? All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do have seven more questions left to be asked of all of the trustee candidates. However, due to time constraints, we're not going to be able to present those questions to the trustees. If you'd like, after our formal, formal session, to mingle with the candidates after the session, uh, please feel free to do so. At this time, we're going to proceed with closing statements, and we're going to give, give each candidate an opportunity to present a two-minute closing statement. We'll proceed first with Trustee Brendan. Trustee Brendan? 
Thank you. Um, once again, thank you to the Parsons Committee. Thank you to the Friends of the Parthenist Library. And thank you to each one of you for taking this time from your Sunday afternoon to spend with us. Um, thank you for all of the questions. You really come up with some very um, thought-provoking questions. And I appreciate them. I think we all do. But I particularly appreciate them because then it kind of keeps me thinking about what it is that you are seeking from us uh, and what it is that you're looking for more of in the village. I, as I said for you, um, I am and will continue to be a Park Forest champion. So um, I, I will continue to, um, to be dedicated to ensuring that we have long-term stability in this community and that we continue to grow. That we, you know, we have problems, we have challenges, and those we would continue to face and work on and make Park Forest um, the kind of place that our kids want to live in and their kids want to live in. And that we can go back and say, you know, remember the days and see the Park to exercise your right and go out to vote. It's very important. Um, yes, we are running and we are uh, and don't have the challenges, but we still need your support. To me, um, it's not about whether or not I'm being challenged, but you going out to vote is a signal to me that, that, is, that you want me to continue my job serving as your village trustee. So once again, thank you. And thank you for the honor that you've given me <coughs> to this point. Trustee O'Neill. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. Uh, appreciate everyone that's responsible for providing this. Um, and what I thought I'd do is, we always start out in our opening statement, and actually even through the questions, talking about our history. And what I thought I'd like to do is kind of bring you up to date and things that I'm doing right now that are relevant um, uh, to in this position. Um, I mentioned before my business background, but I have a very active business and professional involvement right now and that includes, I am ambassador to the Chicago Southland Chamber of Commerce. I'm active with other legal, local, and regional chambers of commerce. Um, I attend and am active with the South Suburban Mayors and Managers Association, and I network with other villages. And in doing all that, uh, just about 100% of the time, I'm wearing my name badge that says who I am and who I represent. And I gotta tell you, that it has generated a lot of good, positive discussion about Park Forest that wouldn't have happened. So I guess I just want to sum it up by saying, I hope I can continue serving. One thing I was thinking May was saying um, about being a champion, and I like that word, but I guess in the capacities that I'm serving, I look at it more as an ambassador for Park Forest. And uh, I hope to continue serving as an ambassador for Park Forest um, for our exceptional village. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Popesinski. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Ray. Um, I want to thank the Friends of the Library. Um, thank all of you for coming. Thank the nonpartisan committee. Um, this has been a wonderful series of uh, discussions. Um, there is a greeting that uh, generally a Polish men would give to each other. You can say Dzień Dobry, which is hello, good day. Uh, the word is Servus, which is right out of the Latin. Um, I know a Latin scholar here who could probably comment on that. Um, service, service. And uh, that's what it's all about. And I have enjoyed serving the people of Park Forest, and I look, at, I, I look forward to continued uh, service um, in the years ahead. Park Forest is unique. Uh, everyone is welcome here. And everyone has been welcome here for a long time. There are giants in our community, uh, many deceased, or some who have gone on to other places, uh, who made a commitment that Park Forest was going to be a place where everyone had opportunity. Um, and I 
That is a challenge for us. There are people moving into Park Forest who come from places where they have been denied opportunity. And uh, we need to continue to show people that uh, uh, we're not Chicago. You know, we're not, uh, we're not the place you left. Uh, we're the place you belong. Um, and we welcome everyone. And I, I will continue to work hard uh, for the citizens of Park Forest. And I thank you all for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. trustee candidate of your choice, since you've already given them all a round of applause, round of applause rather, that concludes this portion of our forum. Give us a few minutes, please, to set up for our forum for our candidates for village president. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.